Okay, I think we are live now. Um, so we just need to get Stefano. Okay. Hey, how are you? I've just sent you the invite, so it should be oh, very easy. Hey. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm very good. How are you? Cold, very cold. <laughs> it's so cold here too. It's a bit windy now in Florence. Yeah, like, we've it's been super warm, so we need some some cold air out, out there. Yeah, no, that that's fair enough. We've been we've been on the cold air now for two weeks and a half in the UK. It's definitely <laughs> it's gone very very quickly from having mild temperature to suddenly eight degrees. <laughs> so never mind. And yeah. when you go out, it doesn't matter what you do, you wear a hat, whatever, your hair just goes out. We've been with yellow alert weather, uh, which is really bad for wind and, and rain for the last two weeks. So it's, <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> Excellent. Yes. Well, as, Where do you live? In Southampton, the south of England, so right by the coast, which obviously always means that the rain and the wind come here and it's just quite, quite strong. But well, there we go. Oh, and hello, everybody that just joined us. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I guess we will get started because we only have so much time and so many things to talk about. So first things first, I'll do a quick introduction and then I'll let Stefano uh, introduce himself um, and then we will take it from there. So um, hi, everybody. This is the one, two, three, fourth episode of the second series of Tour Guide Central, where tour guides from all over the world come together to tell you what is it that we do and why do we do this and what can you get from the amazing experiences that we offer? Um, and today we have Stefano joining us here from Out of the Box Florence to tell you everything about all of the other cool sustainable options that you can do when you go to visit Tuscany. So please grab the floor and introduce yourself, tell everybody who you are, what do you do and where are you joining us from? Hello everybody, I'm from Fucecchio, it's a little place outside Florence. It's about uh, half an hour, 40 minutes. If you're speeding, or it could be even 50 minutes. <laughs> but that's, that, that's, that's very Ill illegal, so please don't do it. <laughs> so I'm living in Florence for the last so 17, 18 years. Even though I had a break, I lived in Spain for a year. And now I'm fully resident here in Florence. And just about uh, during COVID in 2021, 20, I started out of the box Florence. And also so tracking wine. Because I was doing some researches before opening my business, and I figured out there wasn't anybody doing trekking wine. Now there are, there, there are many copying me, but <laughs> there's a good <laughs> It's part of uh, life. <clears throat> but the, the good point I'm a fully licensed tour operator. I'm not just a guide, I am an hiking guide, I am a wine sommelier, I am a tour operator, I have a university green tourist business and been uh, 12 years plus taking people around Tuscany, Cinque Terre, <laughs> Cinque, Cinque Terre, and whatever, whatever happened. Ciao Pucci. <laughs> Ciao. <laughs> Excellent. Well, so first of all, tell us, how did you get into this whole business? How did you get to be a tour guide, tour operator, everything else? Like, did you just wake up one day and thought to yourself, yeah, you know what, this is what I'm going to do with my life? Or... How was your journey? <laughs> How did you get to this stage? Well, uh, as I said, let's try to be honest. I was 18, 19. I was working in an in a accounting studio and I hated so much. Plus, <laughs> they weren't paying. There's a classic Italian. No paying, playing cash. So black money stuff aside. And my sister told me, come on, Stefano. Give, give a right kick. You know, you, you are clever. You can do things. And then... Uh, so I am looking for universities and I found the one in Florence <clears throat> and uh, I found a tourist business. Also, there's, if I want to do it, at least I want to travel and that's why I end up uh, doing, uh, having a degree in tourist business. And then uh, big changes when, when I moved to Spain for a year, I enlarged. I, I like to say I was, I was born in, in Fuchecchio, so I'm like, I'm Italian, but raised European. So all the kind of rubbish about Europe, is like, I don't care. So I have a Scottish wife. My sister lives in France. I have two French brothers-in-law, one English brother-in-law, a Scottish brother-in-law, 
I do love rugby. I don't care about soccer. <laughs> so it's like I'm much more. I got much more things in common with a friend in Graz than a, than a guy living in uh, I don't know <laughs> in Santa Cruz to <laughs> You know, it's uh, it's, uh, it's it's the beauty of our gen- generations. I look much older than, than you, so I probably <laughs> I, uh, I'm I'm turning forty in December. So I had the, the uh, chance to feel, live, and experience all the European life and growing. I was part of the Erasmus, and uh, you know, it's how, it's how it is. So any as a Brexit was very sad <laughs> from many point of view, and it's still very sad, especially on if you're living in the island. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for sure. But um, I love how this sort of broadening of your horizon sort of took you on this journey and allowed you to really learn. What was it that you wanted to do and, and how you wanted to do things? You know, I always tell people, you know, when you leave whatever is it that you live in, whether it's to go around the corner or to go really far, you, you go through a journey, not just because you're going somewhere, but as a person, it, it changes you. And I think if we all learned and, and were able to appreciate those life experiences and, and take them to the fullest, well, we could all be doing like you know, what you do, <laughs> take it, take it to the next level and, and make sure that this has an impact on everyone else. So now that we know a bit more how you got into this, um, you know, one of the things that I particularly love about your account and about what you do is um, the sustainability route, right? And how important sustainable tourism is, but particularly in, in Italy, because as we've seen in, in previous uh, episodes with a couple of our friends from Rome, and Venice is that, you know, tur- tourism in Italy is very, very damaged by mass tourism and, and all of the horrible practices that people do that can really have an impact in, in heritage. So how, how did you came across sustainability and, and why did you decide that to really follow on this route? Well, first of all, it's because I am an hiking guide and, uh, and I like also being a wine sommelier. Uh, so nature has always been part. Then a very good friend of mine from Graz is into into climate changing. So we always been talking about climate changing since I don't know <laughs> decades and decades and about this step forward. Uh, uh, to be honest, tourism is not sustainable in the first place. Yes. It's not sustainable. The mass tourism, not even my my tourism, my experiences. Isn't because the people that are traveling for a week from the states or even taking going four days in London, you know, is not sustainable. Is it is there is a way out? I don't know, I'm not sure. <laughs> Maybe there would, there would be like a better, more, greener way of traveling. So, in my little small world, I said, if I want to do, I want to do something so, so, so sustainable. For small people, so for sorry, for small, for small groups, six people, eight people maximum, and uh, taking them at least a trek in the wine. So they don't, apart from getting to the starting point, they don't, uh, they're using their legs, they experience their wines and the land where the wines are, are coming from. Because the big difference to be driven between places instead of walking through the vineyards, and then you try the wines of the vineyards where, the, where you walk through. Is a big difference, and you see even in four kilometers, five kilometers, the differences in between wines is ridiculous, and so that's that's all about. That's why I, I started. And of course, I'm such a very small business, so whatever, whatever happens, I take it. And uh, 2022 was my first year, and uh, so let's see how it goes. I tried to <laughs> expand it. <laughs> Maybe, uh, people liked it. Of it. it is a different way. So I just created a product that wasn't existing before. So people type, oh, Chianti, oh, oh, Chianti, oh, Van, oh, oh, uh, or drivers, final drivers, but they never really, they don't know what wine trekking is. And actually, if, if it, some, <laughs> this is about, uh, some, someone asked me, so uh, Stefano, what is trekking? I said, they're just hiking. Ah, hiking. Huh? <laughs> so then they're, they're not scientists, but. <laughs> At least they they are trying something different, whatever. Well, no, no, but that's good. And uh, you know, one of the things that I wanted to ask you was, you know, how do you do you do you generally feel that people have now started thinking about this? Do you start seeing more people coming and asking you and wanting to do it 
this way than, you know, the typical getting a car, be ferrying around from one place to another? Like, how have you seen that change? The change, man. In my little world, I just started like 2021. So it's my first year as, yes. and this year. So the people, there have been the loss of interest about it. The people want to do it. It's something different, something new. It's not something like extraordinarily exhausting. So people love to take the time for half an hour for a walk and in between wineries, they love it. They absolutely love it. And uh, I always look, I like things, uh, to make things complicated. So I, I don't go into big wineries open from Monday to Sunday. Always try to look for family wineries. They're not organized, you call them, are hey, you open, no open, I'm closed, please. Please don't come. So I'm like, please, please, I've got clients. No, no, please don't come. So, uh, it's about, so it's about, <laughs> it's about, uh, it's a lot of, lots of challenges. It was much easier world before when I was just being a guide. And, uh, but you know, challenges make you, make you stronger. And that's so. And, and I suspect as well, because you're doing it this way and connecting with the locals. That's mm -hmm. important too, right? Because I think, that is where the magic happens in tourism. When you really get to like, you know, the, the basic level dealing with the day-to-day -day people, then it's not just the fact that you're offering a different product, which, which you are. You're mm -hmm. also offering, at least from my perspective, a much more humane experience, right? You're, you're having that closeness, that relatability. Yeah. And I think that's really what makes a journey worthwhile. The fact that you've been somewhere walk through that somewhere and really engage with those people. Um, that's what's going to make it, you know, interesting and, and relatable to everyone else. So, yes, I suspect this is a lot of hassle trying to, <laughs> particularly as I can imagine it is in the countryside, I suspect it's much like in the Spanish countryside where, you know, sometimes it's open, sometimes it's not. And it's, it's a it depends. Thing. <laughs> depends. I, like, I like to mean, it's, it's, it's challenging. But um, I don't know, for my humble opinion, so don't, don't take it granted from a humble idea about wines. Uh, nowadays, it's much more difficult to produce bad wines than good wines. And they got good wines produced all over the world. So no matter what, it could be here, it could be uh, Iceland, Norway, mm -hmm. with climate changing, you know, people with wines. So what is what makes a wine different is is the story behind, call it storytelling, or the personality, how the wine is served, how the wine is the experience. Because if I give it to you ten bottles of wine, they probably taste to you all the same. They, I mean, they, they all, they, they, there are differences, but what the main aspect is just to to drink wine in different contexts, so that it was make the wine more special. Sometimes um, I can make it, sometimes uh, I have to go in uh, whatever, whatever found, but you know, it, can, it doesn't exist in the, the perfect place. <laughs> no, no, of course. But you know, like you said, I, I think that that process and, and being part of it is also what makes it special and what makes it interesting. Um, so just from the point of view of, of wine, and I guess in, in the UK, we call that eno tourism. I don't know if that's the same everywhere else. You know, in the UK, we like making fancy names for things. Um, but what um, can you tell us a bit more about how this this type of wine tourism comes up about and, and why why did you get interested into wine? Because, for example, being Spanish, and I know this Spanish people all over the world, please don't kill me, but I've never liked wine, ever. Like, it, I just didn't like it. I love Mosto, you know, the, the juice that comes from the grape that is still fermented, love it. Grapes, everything, but wine is just not my thing at all. Um, but of course, you know, I, I know people love it and whatnot. So I'm always curious to know, what, what is it about, you know, wine tasting and wine tourism that is so special? And, and how did you got into it in the first place? Like, have you always liked wine or, or is it just something you came across? Well, uh, but, uh, either way, I grew up as a farm, as a farm. I grew up my, with, with, with my grandparents and uh, my mother, father, it had a piece of land, which is like vegetables, and nothing else. He said, my father, or my, sorry, my grandfather, on my father's side, he was, he was made wine and olive oil. And uh, so I always grew up, I mean, I remember my first, 
uh, harvest thing was probably when I was five, seven. Oh, wow. Okay. And also, and probably my first glass of wine probably when I was five, and and you see <laughs> all the damages around here <laughs> from drinking wine so early, and uh, so wine and olive oil has always been part of my life. Even though my grandfather never let me prune his olive trees because uh, he said uh, you're gonna ruin my olive tree. <laughs> so, but when it, once he died, I had to do it. So I've done it. Now it's a, it's a shame, so shame on me, but I'm living in uh, Florence and uh, the piece of land that my grandfather left to me and to my family is about one hectare. I don't really look after, uh, but you know, I've got, <laughs> I've got other, other things to do and uh, well, it's complicated, but right. So wine and olive oil, even I have to say, I never really like it because every Sunday, every Saturday I had to go, you know, and pick olives, all the, or working <laughs> grass and uh, but my best memory is always coming from that piece of land. I mean, my grandfather had a huge cherry tree, it was huge, it was massive, and everybody was going to steal his cherries. He was a communist, so I said, Anybody can go and get his cherries. But I said, Stefan, go on top and get the, the, the best ones before any, anybody else. So I used to, to climb on the cherry tree to get all the cherries. And uh, so this has been part of me. And then uh, wine, uh, drinking. He, he used to make me clean the, the vat for the wine fermentation from inside. And he was holding me from uh, my leg. And it's like, pull, 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 pull me down before I faint. So, <clears throat> so these other damages caused by, by wine. So it's, it's, it's part of your blood and your genetics then you, you can't you can't help it that's fair enough though but it, but you know it's it's cool to be able to to still relate to things like that in, in our day-to-day -day life and particularly you know if it's part of your job I think that makes it all the more special and and I suspect you know that very intimate relationship you have with the subject makes it also more interesting for your for your customers for your clients because because you have that uh, that approachability so in terms of the of the wine tasting and and obviously other than having to uh having to organize the treks and and what not um what uh, what is it that you look after um like if someone was to ask you oh what what would be a good place where to try a wine or what specific type of wine do i have to try if i go to to tuscany would you have like a selection of them that you would say oh yes of course you need to try this this and that or would you be quite happy to just recommend anything? Well, very happy to recommend it. It always depends on the client's needs. Very happy to recommend anything they want. I mean, there are certain areas that, are, that are, I studied, certain areas that I know they will appreciate more. And, um, but I'm very happy to recommend anything. But the problem is if, if someone Ask me, Stefan, I want to do something different, something special, something that nobody been okay. Tell me, like San Gimignano. San hey. San Gimignano is not special, mate. But uh, I, I, <laughs> I mean, there is, it's nice if you go at night. If you want, I can take you in San Gimignano at night with nobody there. But it is a massive tourist place. But like, even if you go other places. Uh, Montalcino, you only see tourists. If you if you go now in Montalcino, it's barely can find a coffee place open for the for the for the locals. Pienza, Monte Monte Pulciano. It's smart. They want to do it. They want to see it. It's fantastic. You go and see Pienza, Monte Pulciano, whatever or two. But uh, I mean, Tuscany. It's much nicer to take a drive and stop in a in a place. There are so wonderful hikes around Florence. Nobody knows. Because Florence is like art and Renaissance and museums. Beautiful. It has to be like, like is this, no, go to see David. But at the end, you know, uh, grab a Wikipedia. <laughs> and just, yes. You know, uh, it's massive, beautiful. Someone has a fantastic uh, feelings about art. But what the people don't know is the natural beauty of Tuscany. They're yeah. not rolling hills and the cypress trees, but just getting lost into the woods around here. It's beautiful. 
go to Montepulciano and take a bike, go to Montepulciano and have a, and hike there. It's much more interesting than the, than the town itself. Uh, there's a lovely town, uh, like Pienza, like Montalcino, San Gimignano, they're beautiful. But you know, in, in my mind, especially, okay, <laughs> You know, the, the San Gimignano, but like the, the Cinque Terre. People oh. want to see the Cinque Terre non stop every time. But <laughs> the answer is getting out there. Grab a car or a bike or whatever you have and just get lost in the see? outdoors of, of Tuscany. Yes. Safe everywhere, so you just get lost. Whatever, whatever you bump into, then if you find wine, you can travel Tuscany picking different wine regions. So I want to see Montepulciano because I like the Nobile di Montepulciano. I like Montalcino because I like Brunello di Montalcino. And uh, other, other aspects, you know, like uh, San Quirico d'Orcia because of the Orcia Doc. Uh, uh, but you can pick area linked with the, with the wine producing there. That's, that's, a, that's a nice way of traveling, definitely. <laughs> That sounds, that sounds like a good thing. I think, do you think maybe people don't do it because they're scared of like engaging with the locals or with the area? Like, I don't, I don't know how easy it is for, let's say, the average American or European tourist to fly, I guess, fly somewhere nearby Florence, right? And then get out there. Is it easy to, you know, drive or find someone that will take you there and then you find your own way around it because i guess sometimes sometimes the issue is that people you know if people don't feel confident enough mm -hmm. to do it themselves how can we get them to that stage which obviously that's where you come in because then they don't need to worry about it you, you you sort that out for them but i i wonder if sometimes it's that i guess accessibility point like people may want to do these things but, but they may not even know where to start I don't know. It's it's something that I wonder. Well, it's it's all, all about knowledge. I yes. mean, uh, people that do research will achieve something the other wants. Yes. Uh, so the people they want to come to task and they want to see San Gimignano, Pisa, Cinque Terre, vabbè, and then says there there are and there always be people doing that and searching for that. There are a, a small percentage that want to do something, they're curious about something else. They like, they like to, to do some research. Most of the people come to France because someone told them and there's someone that just do it because they want to see something specific. I had a client, fantastic uh, couple. He was a professor of history. He spent you know, six months here during COVID oh, wow. doing researches in the National Archive of uh, Florence mm -hmm. between the for the period 1509-1511 and it was okay. it was one of the uh, people out there that want to do something different he's doing we're doing research he's into hiking and wine he's into what? Into, <laughs> into, into hiking there are people out there and uh, I'm trying to offer them something special something different that they cannot find anybody else plus I'm not, I'm not uh, Spanish, I'm not uh, French, I'm not uh, Danish or English. I'm, what was born raised in Tuscany? So yes. <laughs> uh, I, know, I, I know my stuff around here, the people better than me, I'm not say about this, the people worse than me, but that's, that's why I'm doing And I try to maybe in the next season to build a team uh, with people helping me. So we try to work out. Let's try if I can make something good, not just for me, but also for the for the guy. I try to. Do. So, in in your mind, um, what um, what would be uh, like in in an ideal world? Mm -hmm. If I was to come to Tuscany and want to do, despite me not liking wine, <laughs> if I wanted to try the experience, just because I, I generally think as a concept, it sounds cool. You go somewhere, you try the land, you walk through the land. I love hiking. So that's, that's you know, on, on that side, I'm, I'm completely sold. Um, how long would a tour like this last for? Like, what, what kind of experience like this take? Because no. obviously, it like you said, you need to do the hike and you need to walk between one place to another, then you taste some wine. Like, what type of time range do you, do you think is ideal? 
But if you would be uh, great if you're doing multi days, mm -hmm. so days trips, the normally better. But otherwise, I normally do half day, full day. But nothing stopped me to organize even the multi days. If you go multi days, it would be very interesting to see to stay longer in places. Could be even a, a nice way of like traveling instead mm -hmm. of being a, like a pinball ding 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 ding. Stay a week in uh, Florence and enjoy Florence and all the surroundings. Could be perfect. Instead of going Florence, Venice, Rome in four days. Yes. The problem is in uh, not many at the time and the money uh, to stay 10 days in Italy. I mean, I see that. Uh, yeah. So you always try to, <laughs> like, you can't stop Ryanair, but you don't work with, with Ryanair. That's all. <laughs> yes, <laughs> for, for sure. <laughs> But no, I mean, that, that sounds like a good idea. So ordinarily, you're saying uh, a normal experience would be half a day to a full day. How many kilometers do you think you walk in, in one of those? And uh, how many wineries or, or wine tastings do you do? Just, I, just to compare the, the calorific intake with the output. <laughs> well, I will, do, I, will, I will do very soon an estimation of a calorie consumed during my tour. <laughs> could, be, could be nice. Uh, no, I like my best sale. It is the Chianti Classico crossing. Uh, actually, it's called the Great Chianti Classico crossing. I I invented and I combined together three wineries to cross a valley, so it's not like the kind of round trip stuff. So I, I work twice because I have to go back to the starting point to get the van, <laughs> and drive the van to the ending point while the client is having wine tastings. But, you know, I had, had the chance to answer email on the, on the way back, uh, phone calls and stuff like this. And so this, we walk about seven kilometers, eight kilometers. That's okay. not very good, very simple. I designed it to be much more downhill than, than uphill. Okay. And uh, there were three wineries on the way. So 45 minutes walk, one wine tasting, one hour walk and lunch. Uh, and then another 20 minutes walk and you have another wine tasting. This is pretty much the uh, standard when the uh, one is cannot uh, be available. So we try to find different itinerary, but so far, always working on it on the on the on the same itinerary. Oh, but that that seems pretty good pace because I guess I guess you don't want them to be too tired by the time they get to the wine tasting because otherwise, well, that becomes more like wine gulping rather than tasting, right? <laughs> to quench the thirst. So it's, it's good to work on appetite. And of course, you know, you can't really have them marching through miles and miles because that would just be uh, horrific. I, I can't imagine okay, that there is... Very simple. Right? Yes. It's so it, really it, sounds, it sounds good. It sounds easy. Not, not easy in a way that it doesn't present a challenge and therefore it seems trivial. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you, you get to do a little bit of exercise, have a look around the landscape, really embrace this this uh winery landscape and then have a little bit to it and in terms you said you also stop for lunch we have lunch i, I like lunch we have lunch so, and so th that's part of the and do you do that in one of the wineries because i know sometimes i've seen you with like picnics set up in the middle of, of a field or something like that sometimes they do picnics but not, not into this area we sit and then we have lunch yeah the, the, the civilized way, like my mom would say, <laughs> <We, laughs> sitting at the table. <laughs> Even and, though I like to eat standing, but you know, we're like. <clears throat> yeah, that's that's fair enough. Excellent. Well, I, I appreciate that we have about uh, ten more minutes of this. If so, um, so I should probably start wrapping it up. Um, but one of the things that I love asking everyone that comes onto these talks is, um, if you could share with us. Uh, one particular experience or tour or group of people, something, something that you did this year um, that it was so heartwarming, so beautiful, so inspiring that you really felt that that group or that tour was like, you know, the reason why you do this. Can you can you share a moment like that? I'm sure you have many. I'm sure you have loads. But if you had to pick one, could you could you share how that was and what that made you feel? Always, but, um, 
I have to say, I mean, honestly, I have a mostly lovely people coming on my experience. So I don't have anything that I bought. They're, they're all been very good, I have to say. Nothing, what else? I mean, some like they talk more, some of them more funny than others. But, uh, boo, <laughs> don't know, big question. Um, whatever. But a couple of times the guys propose on, on a tour. Really? Oh, that must be very beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> they they don't know the, the consequences, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. okay. Uh, <laughs> was it premeditated or was the wine talking in the proposal? You uh, think? It wasn't. Uh, I mean, I didn't know. So the guy showed up and, and said, can you... So I was holding the phone. That was at the end. Oh, nice. Pretending to do like a photo, but then actually, then he need and he asked her, "Will you, will you marry me?" She said no, but it's a, it's a, <laughs> she said yes. Oh, okay. yeah. I was going to say that would make things very awkward. I suspect. No, no, no. They say he, she, she said yes. Uh, what else? But pretty much this, this things here. Yeah. That's nice, though. That must be very. I mean. You know, if, if you put that in context, that means that somebody got out of the way to find a nice experience to do with you, so then they could create this even more special moment in, in their life and yeah. trusted you with this, right? They trusted you with, with the wine and the marriage proposal and everything. That's, that's really awesome because um, yeah. those people now are going to be thinking about that lovely winery and, and field in, in Tuscany for the rest of their life as, as that one very special moment. So that, that must be feeling really good, I suspect. And, and you've had it, you said more than once, so, so this is something that happens. A couple of times, yeah, I, feel, I feel very good. I mean, very, very happy that someone put all the, all the trust in me. <laughs> I like it, it's good. Yeah, yeah no, that's, that's really, really lovely. Ah, I, I've not had any wedding proposals in my tours so far. I kind of feel jealous now. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. I, I mean, I've had, I've had wedding after parties, which I never, I, I was always surprised that someone would want to do a, a tour after they get married, right? Like literally ceremony, <laughs> they've eaten and then they go on a tour. Um, and like, I'm thinking... After they sign the paper. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And I always thought, oh, okay, not what I would be doing, but hey, it works for me. Wonderful, amazing. And I guess it's, you know, people, we, we like to find different things to make, you know, life special. Um, and, and I guess, you know, what we do as, as tour guides is, is creating those moments, is um, giving them something memorable and something to remember. So I think that this is, this is the beauty of our job. Um, and I, I am even more envious of you because you get to do all of this in nature, which is, is, the, is the dream, right? My, my dad always says that humans, uh, we are just mere imitators. Nature has all the wonder and beauty of life. We try to imitate it and make something beautiful through music, through art, you know, through anything like that, when actually all we need to do is open up our window and enjoy the gift of nature. So in that respect, I'm incredibly jealous because the, the part of Spain where I come from, the north, Cantabria, it's all, you know, it's all beautiful landscapes, mountains. Yeah, yeah. Well, because the Europa is one of the yeah. most mountains. I've been hiking in a, in a hangover there. I will, I, will, <laughs> I will not recommend anybody. Lagos, Lagos the, the Covadonga. Cova yeah. No, no. <laughs> it's a beautiful refuge. The, the, the guy that runs that is a, he's a crack. He's got no electricity yes. uh, with, 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 with my brother-in-law, no lights, fantastic chorizo. And then <laughs> the morning after we drank like fish and, and uh, <laughs> after we just hike to like Pico something. There is about uh, through, the, through the snow with no gears or anything. <laughs> I like my shoes fall, fall apart from the ice. Oh, the ice. yes. And uh, it, was, it was one of the greatest memories of my life. And Spain, and I will live in Spain now, and it's amazing. It uh, is. Sabria, it is. I, I, I try to make everybody eat anchovies, because I love anchovies, and, and Cantabria is the capital of anchovies. Yes. We are the capital of anchovies. We love our anchovies. 
Um, but you know, one of the things that we, we have in common, and one of the reasons why I like a lot what you do, is um, a, lot of the, a lot of the time people that come to Cantabria don't necessarily come for tourism. Cantabria has always been a very abandoned and out of the back type of place. Um, but the very few people that come for tourism come for the hikes, you know, going up to Picos, going up um, a across the um, El Valle del Paz and, and just having, you know, a general walk around. It really gives you a feel for the people, you know, people in Cantabria are, are very humble. We're mostly farmers, fishermen, and that's how we've been our whole life. We don't try to oh. be anything fancy, <laughs> you know. Oh, lovely people, great food, as it says, great yes. Well, you're going very, very generous in, in portions. Yes, the portions are great. Yeah, they are huge. Um, but that's, that's, um, that's something that I think is really special, that, that we try to encourage people to get out of the cities more and engage with the country and, and with the actual ordinary lives that happen in the country, because without that countryside and without that nature, we, we simply wouldn't have anything else. Um, so, you know, hopefully the people that come on your tours grab that message and they pass it on and someone else learns about it and we can create, like you said, tourism is never going to be sustainable proper and unless we invent something, I don't know, <laughs> amazing in terms of engineering. But it's, it's little things like this that at least can have a small positive impact, right? Um, and particularly if we're sharing this with the local community, with those small wineries, with those small family businesses, then that's, that's all going to help those areas be, be safe, be rich, but also enrich our lives. Which at the end of the day, that's, that's what we're here for. Is uh, it's, a, it's our little mission. Every day, yeah. gradually, we, we try to at least try to deliver something different, something new, uh, as green as possible. There's, in my plan is to buy electric vans. Nice. Uh, so we'll be, I hope, to be the first to open this data fully green. So nice. emissions for the walking and for the, for the transportation. The best one if someone riding bikes. If you're yeah. riding between Ireland and uh, UK, come over here, then it will be zero as a travel can be, can be, can be green. You need time, we probably... It's a, big, it's a big bike ride, a big commute. <laughs> we need to rethink our lives. In, in, yeah. in, or many I mean, cl climate change will probably will make us, to force us to rethink our life. Um, you know, it was, uh, let's, see, let's, let's see what's happening next. Yes. But I really, really hope 2023 would be a good year for you and we can have those electric bikes and a lot more uh, people with, within limits, of course, uh, coming to enjoy that, that countryside, those experiences and, and creating more lovely and beautiful memories. Um, and that is, unfortunately, all we have time for today. Um, so before we wrap it up and we say goodbye, um, if you would like to just send one final message for anyone watching at home now or later, one thing that you, you really feel you must share with people, whatever it may be. Please, go ahead. <laughs> I like thinking about mottos. I like, I've got every mind because I, I do run, now less. But every time that I go for a, a run, my brain works more. So I've got a list of, of mottos. <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> out of the box, friends, the way you travel matters. And uh, out of the box finds uh, extraordinary experiences for not ordinary people. Nice uh, one. Good one. Uh, travel slow, discover more. Yes. And then uh, whatever, out of, out of the box finds stay awesome. <laughs> and then uh, out of the box finds, well, there was another couple of things, but. No, but. Two special things. More. I think more, more. These are really good. Oh, yes. And see, people here in the chat are, are agreeing with you. Yes, the, the way we travel matters indeed. So, you know, <laughs> yeah. hopefully, hopefully this will start sticking with people and, and we can all contribute to make things, you know, a little easier, a little better for the planet and for our societies. And on that note, you know, travel slow, explore more. Have a wonderful time in Tuscany. People go and, and experience wine and hikes with Stefano. And, uh, you know, 
make sure that the next time you're traveling, whether it's to Italy or, or anywhere else in the world, you, you do your research and you generally try to do something that is a little bit different. And yeah. on that note, it's been a wonderful time having you here with me today. Thank you so much for doing this. Pleasure, pleasure. Excellent. And, uh, you know, next time that I'm about, because my mom has not been, my mom has only been to Italy once, and my mom loves wine. So when I drag her to Tuscany, we will be coming. <laughs> please, please, please come to some wine trekking with Stefano. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you so much. Have a lovely day, Stefano. Take care. Ciao. Take care. Bye. Bye. Ciao. Ciao.